Hello and welcome to another Salty Sunday. When I travelled to the Antarctic Peninsula for my PhD and later postdoctoral research, I knew I was experiencing something extraordinary. Even now, more than 30 years later, the memories continue to shape how I see our fragile and beautiful world. I remember an encounter with two humpback whales who approached our ship lingering as if curious, then moving away to give us an amazing display of breaching and tail slapping, before circling back, almost as if they were making sure we hadn't missed it. It was my first encounter with wild whales, and a memory I will never forget. At that time, humpback whales were still recovering from the devastation of industrial whaling. Today, the Antarctic Peninsula is once again teeming with them, a conservation success story born from international cooperation and the banning of commercial whaling. These whales undertake an epic migration from the Pacific coasts of Central and South America, where they mate and give birth. It's a journey of around 8,300 kilometers. They arrive in Antarctic waters exhausted and hungry, having survived solely on their fat reserves for months. The peninsula's krill-rich feeding grounds are essential to their survival, but all of this is now under threat. The Western Antarctic Peninsula has warmed by nearly 5 degrees Celsius in winter since the 1950s. This extraordinary rate of change has caused ice shelves to collapse, glaciers to retreat, and new land and marine areas to be exposed. Sea ice extent, crucial for the entire ecosystem, now lasts about 80 fewer days each year than it did four decades ago. Because sea ice drives much of the region's biological productivity, its decline reverberates through the entire food web. Remarkably, humpbacks are rebuilding their populations in one of the fastest warming places on Earth, but their recovery is now being jeopardised by a second, entirely preventable pressure, one that makes me genuinely angry. Modern industrial krill fishing began in the 1970s, but it is the last 15 years that have seen a dramatic escalation. Krill, which are tiny shrimp-like crustaceans, are the foundation of the Southern Ocean ecosystem. Nearly every major predator depends on them. Baleen whales, penguins, seals, fish and seabirds. Reducing krill availability even moderately, can have disproportionate effects on these species. I've had the chance to observe these krill myself. On one expedition, I was lucky enough to dive beneath the sea ice and witness these incredible creatures feeding on the sea ice algae growing along its underside. They gathered the algae, rolled it into little balls and popped them into their mouths. The air bubbles when I breathed out disturbed them, so I had to hold my breath to enjoy watching them. It's another fabulous memory from my time in the Antarctic. We are already seeing the consequences of a reduction in krill availability. Recent research shows a decline in humpback pregnancy rates along the Western Antarctic Peninsula. In 2017, following a year of high krill abundance, 86% of sampled females were pregnant. Last in 2020, after a year of lower krill availability, only 29% were pregnant. Scientists warn that the population may be approaching a threshold where prey shortages limit further recovery. Penguins face similar pressures. A 2025 Nature study reported accelerating declines in emperor penguin populations due to warming oceans and shrinking seasonal sea ice. Pressures intensified by competition with industrial krill fisheries. During the most recent Antarctic summer, 14 industrial vessels from Norway, China, Chile, South Korea and Ukraine concentrated fishing efforts around the peninsula, directly overlapping key whale feeding areas. Within just seven months, the fleet harvested 620,000 tonnes of krill the maximum annual catch allowed by Camelar. This limit is designed to prevent ecological harm. Once reached, the fishery must close. What shocked scientists is how quickly it happened. Camelar expected this threshold to be hit in three to five years, not halfway through 2025. 
The situation was worsened by the failure of Kamala member states to renew spatial management rules, allowing fleets to cluster near shore in wildlife hotspots. And expansion continues. China launched a new vessel this year, and Norway's Acker Biomarine, which already takes nearly 70% of the catch, plans to launch a new super trawler in 2026. The krill caught is not used for human food. Most of it becomes feed for farmed salmon, especially in Norway and Chile. The rest is used for omega-3 supplements and the pet food industry. Demand from these sectors has driven the rise of an increasingly powerful and efficient industrial fleet. Krill catches have risen from 106,000 tonnes in 2006 to 498-350 tonnes in 2024 to the full legal limit of 620,000 tonnes in 2025. Scientists and public figures at the 2025 UN Ocean Conference called for a moratorium, but no consensus was reached. Horrifically, there have been reports of humpback whales becoming entangled in krill fishing nets and dying. In one incident, a crew spent 40 minutes trying to free a humpback from the net. Although they eventually released it, the animal was lethargic and injured, and was later presumed to have died. Humpback whales are sentinel species. Their declining pregnancy rates are a clear warning that the ecosystem is under severe stress. Without stronger conservation measures being implemented soon, the Antarctic Peninsula's extraordinary wildlife will face irreversible harm. This situation is something, as consumers, we can do something about. If you take them, check your omega-3 supplements. Avoid products containing krill, which can be listed as krill or euphorsia superba. Vegan alternatives are widely available. If you eat salmon, you can check salmon labels. Most farm salmon is fed on krill. And if you have a pet, check your pet food. There are alternatives to these products. The UK health retailer Holland & Barrett is phasing out krill products entirely by April 2026. So that is where I'll be getting any supplements, should I need them. The Antarctic is one of the most remarkable ecosystems on Earth. Its future now hinges on choices we make far from its shores. Thank you for watching. And if you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.